once we put something like Carpenter in our Kubernetes cluster, what can we do next? Well, Carpenter's there and it's doing its auto scaling and it's doing, and doing its thing from a worker node perspective. But what if we want a little bit more management? What if we want the ability to manage CPU, memory, quotas, et cetera, at the pod level, for example, so we can use both Carpenter and another tool together to get the job done in an actual repeatable fashion. Because remember, automation doesn't always mean repeatable. So let's see how we can make this a little bit more repeatable with Stormforge. So if I go ahead and if I just run kubectl get all namespace Carpenter, we can see that Carpenter is in fact configured. And then if I run kubectl get, I believe it's node class. Oop, nope, let's take a look here. Oh, node pool, that's what it is. Sorry about that. Node pool. We can see we have our default node pool here that we configured in the previous video. So now what I wanna do is let's head over to the Stormforge GUI. All right, and from here, and you can sign up for a free, I believe it's 30 day trial, by the way, just go to the Stormforge website. And if we go to clusters and we click add a cluster, I'm gonna type in the name here. So the name of my EKS cluster is KDS Quick Start Cluster. Then I'll click the continue button here, right? And as you can see, we have this values.yaml file. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna click continue. And what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to install Stormforge pointing to this values file. All right, so back at VS Code here, what I'll do is I'll just create a values.yaml, paste that in. And then as you can see, we have our Helm configuration right here. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm in the right directory. Let's go ahead and get rid of this message here. And then install. All right, and as we can see, that was installed. If we just run kubectl get all namespace stormforge system, right? We'll just do a quick watch on here. That way we can see, oop, actually let's do that on the pods, pods namespace stormforge system watch. That way we can see once everything is up and running and it actually is. <laughs> so now that it is, we can head back over to the browser and we can go to verify install because everything should be officially up and running. Alrighty, so if we go ahead and click on finish here and we go to clusters, we can go ahead and give that a minute or two here. All right, there it is. And then we can click on our cluster and now what we can begin to do is number one, you're gonna wanna let Stormforge sit for about four to seven days, give or take, to begin to collect some information. So right now it was just installed, right? So there's really no information. I don't have anything deployed. It's a new cluster, et cetera. But what Stormforge does is it ends up just collecting data over those couple of days. That way it can give you true numbers for the optimization. And then if we go back to the overview, notice here, it's gonna take about one hour to collect all of that information. What you can assume now at this point is once all the metrics are collected, we can then begin to perform resource optimization on our applications that are running. And then we can let Carpenter do its thing from a worker node perspective with scaling. So overall, the idea of Carpenter and Stormforge together, it's really all about ensuring that you have the tools that you need to get the job done for performance optimization. Stormforge, it handles the pods, it handles all the workloads, it handles the resource optimization for those workflows, or rather for the application stacks, not the workflows. And then Carpenter handles that just-in-time node. It handles scaling up nodes, scaling down nodes, based on workload and based on the node configurations that you give it for the various instance types.